Hey everyone, in our previous two videos, we had built the backend and the frontend of our PDF splitter application. The backend was written in PyPDF2 and the frontend was written in Flask. In this video, we are going to take this application that was developed locally and deploy it on the cloud. So before we do that, let me just quickly demo the application that we had built. So this is the PDF splitter. It extracts pages from the start page and the end page and saves it as a separate PDF file. So let me give a start page as one and then end page as three and uh, choose a sample PDF file. And let me upload this. So right now this upload is happening locally. So let me extract and download the PDF file. So I get the extracted PDF file. So now let's see how we could do the same using uh, Python anywhere. So let me visit Python anywhere. So now let me create a new account and a beginner account. So this username, whatever you give here would be your domain name. So let me give a flask example. And then a email ID, you would need to provide a email ID here. And also a password. So let me agree to the terms and uh, that is pretty much it. Let's just hope this domain is not already taken. Okay, it's taking a while for it to load. Okay, so it's not taken. So I don't want it to right now. So now the first thing we need to do here is create a web app. So let me head over to web here. And now let me create a new web app. So this will be the domain name of our application flask example.pythonanywhere.com. So now let me click next and uh, we are going to create a flask application and uh, the version of Python that I'm running is 3.6. So let me choose 3.6 and uh, this will be the working directory wherever our code would be present. And now this is going to create a folder where all our code would be present. So now let me just visit this website. So it is a sample Flask app that Python Anywhere has created for us. So it is just hello from Flask. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go to files and upload our code that we had written over here. So my site is where all the application logic or the code is present. Let me delete this uh, sample file generated by Python Anywhere. So now let me upload the files that we had written earlier. So let me see where those files are located. So those files are, uh, okay, let me just copy the path here. And then let me upload those files. So these are the files that we had written. So we need to upload them one by one. I'm not sure if uh, Python Anywhere provides a version where you could upload all of them together. I guess in the premium version, you can do that. So now we have uploaded these two files. This was the Flask frontend and this was the backend of the PDF splitter. That is all we need right now. And then let me create a separate directory where our templates are stored. So templates were those HTML files that had loaded through Jinja templating. So that directory needs to be named as templates. So I'll create this new directory. So now once inside this templates directory, I'll upload whatever the HTML files we have. So I will have to upload it one by one. So success file upload and uh, there's one more to upload download. Okay, it does not uploaded one of them file upload. So let me upload that. So now we have written whatever the code we had written locally. We have uploaded it to this my site directory. So this was the two Python codes and then there is this directory where the templates are present. So now what we need to do is let's head over to web. So now here this WSGI file needs to be edited. So this is the default app that uh, Python anywhere had created. We need to replace this with our application. So my Flask frontend, the file name was app.py. So let me just replace it with app. So from app, it is going to import it as an application. So WSGI by default needs it as an application for it to work. 
So let me save it. So once I've saved, I can exit out of this and let's see our site. Let's see if it has rendered successfully. Okay, it is still hello from flask. That means that Okay, I need to reload it. Of course, I didn't reload the website. So once after reload, let me open it again. So, okay, something went wrong. So let's see the error logs to see what had gone wrong. So here you can see that I've not imported the modules yet. So it says that no module named by PDF2. So let's go ahead and import this respective modules. So to do that, you have to head over to consoles and then go to bash because we need the pip commands to install the respective modules so once this loads up it's going to take a while probably to load up okay it's still loading for some reason Let's see if there was any other error that we had got here. So that was it. No module named pi PDF2 and uh, nothing else. So it's still loading the bash interpreter. This is one, uh, I can't say really a disadvantage because we are already using the free version. But yeah, if you had uh, selected the pro version, it would have been a bit faster. So let's create a virtual environment to install our packages. So it is make virtual env. And then let's name our virtual environment as flask with two k's. And then, uh, yeah, that is probably it. So it's okay. By default, if you don't provide Python here, it's going to choose Python 2.7, which is not what we are using. So let's not do that. We'll create a virtual environment with Python 3 itself. So now we have to head over to this virtual environment directory and uh, delete this. So let me duplicate this. So it by default chooses Python 2.7, which is not actually a good thing. So let me exit out of this and then go to files, virtual env. So this is the virtual env with Python 2.7 that was created. Let's delete it. And now we'll create a new virtual env. Okay, this is not anymore needed. Can I exit out of this? Yeah, let me exit out of it. And now let's create a new VNV and uh, I hope we can specify the version of Python like this here. So we are going to use uh, Python 3.6 and uh, that will probably do it. So it's going to download all the setup files, the pip and wheel. So here is where the location of uh, virtual environment that it creates. So once this virtual environment is created, we could install all the pip packages in here. Again, it's going to take a while. So finally, the virtual environment got created. It actually took a while. So now that we are in the virtual environment, we could install any Python package through here. So let me install Flask, which you would need. So Flask would provide all the front end app routes, etc. And the next thing that we would need is PyPDF2. So again, this might take a while. So I'll pause the video here. So now that Flask is installed, let's install the next required library, which is PyPDF2. And for some reason, it's actually taking a lot of time for it to install. So let's pip install and uh, let me fix that. So I'll again pause the video here and uh, wait for it to install. It's like taking one or two minutes for it to finish installation. So now that both of our uh, libraries are installed, let's quickly get out of this painfully slow bash console. So here is where are all the libraries were installed. So flask example and virtual ENVs. So within this environment, we have our flask virtual environment where all our uh, libraries were installed. So now we need to provide this path for it to look for these libraries. So let's do that. So here we need to provide that path. So the name was flask. So it's going to take in just the name of the virtual environment and uh, find that particular virtual environment, which is pretty cool. So now what let's test our application out to see if it's working or not. So first I'll have to reload it. 
so once the reload is done let me visit the application okay we can see that the web app actually got rendered successfully so let me see if it's everything is working fine so let's give a start page as one then page as three and again choose the sample pdf file and let me upload it so now the file was uploaded and let me extract and then let me download okay so it's giving the internal server error so let's see what might have gone wrong so for that we can always have these logs here so let me go to both the error log and the server log so we can see here that okay there was no such file or directory my site and the crop file so this is probably because the working directory here is set as flask example and it is trying to access a file within my site so let me change this working directory to my site itself so here let me just add my site here and that should probably do it so let me again reload this let me close all of this so then let me visit this here and let's check it out so one three and again the sample pdf file and then upload so then let me extract one two three and uh, let's see if it downloads okay it finally worked so it downloaded the file so that is it so one thing that i would like to address in this video is that whatever you're hosting on python anywhere for free it will only exist for three months unless you press this button so once you do this it will again extend it for three months so until three months from today this web app would be hosted and would not require any manual intervention but after three months if you don't press this button then it would just remove that particular domain and allot it to someone else so this is pretty much it in this video thank you for watching and also please do subscribe